This is episode two, and I just want to thank you all. I'm, I'm so blown away and humbled by the response. Um, it has been so enjoyable to talk to knitters from all over the world and connect with more people that enjoy the same love of knitting that I do. So many of you shared your favorite needles and favorite projects and told me where you're from. Uh, some uh, had a helpful suggestion to for a better camera angle and um, got you covered this week. Also, the lighting, I realized, was a bit harsh as well. Um, so, took all that to heart and I just so enjoyed chatting with people and I'm so excited to continue talking to fellow knitters and thank you so much. I, I so appreciate you watching my podcast and and talking to me and subscribing and liking. It's I've waited a year and a half or I've wanted to do this for about a year and a half. I'm a big time introvert so it was hard to crawl out from underneath my rock <laughs> uh, but here I am and um I realized I also left out some information about myself last week and one um being that I'm from middle Tennessee so um I'm from the south so if you detect a southern accent that's why I was uh, born and raised here have been in Tennessee all my life and the, I just love the countryside here and anyway lovely there's definitely some other areas of the world I would love to visit um, namely the UK and the Scandinavian countries you know where all those amazing sheep and knitters are that's definitely on my bucket list um, Let's see, what, how long have I been knitting and crocheting? I, I can't believe I left that out. <laughs> um, but if my mother is listening, she will get a chuckle. Mama, I'm going to see if you're paying attention to my podcast. <laughs> you better text me. <laughs> um, but when I was nine years old, there was a family friend that crocheted. So I was often in her home and would watch her crochet. And I told Mama, I said, I, I want to do that. And I'm not sure how long I pestered her before <laughs> before she got me some yarn from, I, I don't know if it was Walmart back then or it could have been Roses. I think it was Walmart. Uh, but she got me a crochet hook and she got me a J&P Coates and Clark's, Clark's book and it had crocheting, knitting, and tatting in it. So, off to the races I was. I started working on learning how to crochet with those little, between the descriptions of how to crochet and the little pictures. And our family friend, she would help me out every so often if I had a question because sometimes it was just hard to riddle out. So knitting was in the book, so I had to tackle that. So that is what I did next and um, taught myself how to knit from there. Um, boy, it sure is one a wonderful time to learn how to knit and crochet if that inspires you now. Because with the advent of YouTube, I mean, you can learn everything. Everything is on YouTube. So... But this was back in, I was nine years old when I taught myself to crochet. This was a long time ago. That was 1978. So around 1980, that's when I tackled knitting. And um, tatting was also in the book, and I wanted to learn that. But I just, I didn't stick with it like I did knitting. And... Um, so for years I would start projects and I didn't really follow a pattern and uh, I would start something and not finish it. You know, it was, uh, I think, uh, frustrating for my mother to see me start lots of projects and not finish them, but not the case now. Well, I do have lots of whips, but I finish a lot of things. So anyway... Yeah, 43 years later, I am an avid knitter. I'm not 
quite sure why I love knitting so much, but it has me. It absolutely has me. And um, so I also have some friends that now that I have uploaded my first episode that are really wanting me to get some tutorials up. So that may be happening sooner. I realize that there are already wonderful teachers on YouTube that are already teaching people how to knit. So I, I am not going to do any better than they have. Um, I, I honor the wonderful work they already have on YouTube. So uh, if this is not at all me thinking I can do anything better. It's um, just connecting with people that maybe have connected with me and helping them learn how to knit. So if anybody relates to me and wants to learn from me, then I'm so happy to teach what I know. If you prefer someone else, then definitely learn from who you're comfortable with. So, that said, um, I think I will jump right back into some older projects. Just a few more things. And let's see, one of these made the gallery in my outro. And someone commented that they liked this one. I do too, um... I'll tell you, between uh, Andrea Mowry, who came up with the fade idea, I mean, how fabulous is that? Um, and she's designed so many lovely patterns. But uh, this is the Find Your Fade from the outro that you saw. Boy, this is a really big shawl. I didn't even block it <laughs> because it's just so big. I did not really see the need to block it. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't get the other end, but this is uh, the other end down here. And let's see, so the pattern is lovely and it's quite subtle. There's, uh, you know, it's garter stitch with some simple lace that um, uh, hopscotch over one another. The star of the show is the yarn. And this is one of my favorite yarn dyers. This is all 100% barnyard knits. And I'm trying to remember all the colorways. I think I remember them all with the exception of one. And I, and I don't know what she would, if she has any of these in stock now. But it begins here with a walk in the woods. And this next one, this is the one I'm struggling to remember. I, I can't remember what that one is. And I was looking to see if I had it on my picture on Instagram. That's another thing. Where can you find me? Obviously, I'm here on YouTube. But I, I can also be found on Ravelry, Facebook, and Instagram as Knitting Artisan. Uh, be aware, there is someone else on Facebook that took my name, um, my moniker, and, you know, they preserved the .com and, and held up the Facebook page. So I had to create a second, second Knitting Artisan. Just select the one that has my logo. So, you know, so yes, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. I think that's all. <laughs> uh, so anyway... So here we go. So this is A Walk in the Woods. This one, sadly, I just don't remember. This lovely color here. This is called, I remember that is A Basket of Flowers, which fades into Rosebud, which fades into Sweet Juliet, which fades into faded farmhouse and then it ends in cinnamon bark so yeah this is all 100% um, barnyard knits and I love it it's just um, I love the colors I love uh, Andrea's idea of the fade and people have took taken it and run with it with good reason so yeah, so you see this in the outro at the end of my episode. And then the next thing that I have, this is called the 
8th Avenue. And this is by Cozy Up Knits. And they, the sisters, there's four sisters, and you probably already know who they are. They're out of Canada. And they are so delightful. They're so always so happy and chipper and just so sweet and kind to each other. They encourage each other. It's such a wonderful podcast. And it's too bad I don't get to watch them as often as I would like. I need to catch up on some of those. But Sarah, if you watch them, you are already aware that she's the brilliant designer among the sisters. And so anyway, so this is what she designed. One of the things, just one of the many things she has designed. This is the 8th Avenue Wrap. And all of these minis are colors dyed up by Judy of the Autumn Acorn. So she is another wonderful podcast. Peaceful. She dyes yarn in her beautiful log cabin home up in New Hampshire, I believe it is. And her podcasts are also just so peaceful and lovely. And um, she takes great care to choose yarns that are cruelty free. So you don't have to worry about the animals being mistreated. And her preference is to use natural dyes. So, so anyway, so this was some minis that I got from Judy. And, and this is just such a fun little wrap. I love all these colors that Judy came up with. I mean, I know she used Coconil and probably Loganberry. I'm not sure what else. She would be able to tell you because she's very well first in natural yarn dyeing. So that is my 8th Avenue wrap. And I love that so much. Um, beautiful lace and a couple more wonderful podcast to check out if you haven't already and then then the last thing I'll show from going back to the past this is a beautiful stunning sweater designed by Valentina Bogdanova and I apologize if I am mispronouncing her name she is another stunning designer I just I love all of her designs this one is the Sayuri sweater, and this is a, a top-down lace yoke sweater. So you can see, oh, and I've already given it away there. <laughs> I ruined this sweater. Please be kind in the comments. <laughs> I already know I ruined this sweater, but for a moment, let's just look at the beautiful lace yoke here. So anyway, she's... um. Isn't this just so lovely? And this scalloping that happens around the neckline, it's just a natural consequence of the lace work that she's put down below it. I mean, you just, it, it ends up with that scalloping after you've knit down a little ways into the yoke. Um, there are beautiful sections of twisted rib in here. Um, let's see. These are wraps. They're not noops. I think. Wait a minute. I take that back. I do believe they are noops. So there, there are a few noops in the sweater. And look at this. Look at how beautiful. Oh, it's just. It's, there are some amazing designers. Just uh, what a treasure they are to the knitting community. And I just, when I see works of art like this I just I think of pieces of music that that are just so lovely that you get lost in them and all the different instruments and pitches and it, it just comes together into such a I don't know undulating um, progressive it's I don't know that there's words for it. It's just beautiful. And so, yes. Yeah, so, now down to the shameful part. I ruined my sweater. And I did that because I just couldn't commit to the st stockinette slog. I'm, I'm never going to do that again. 
So, uh, you know, when you have something as beautiful as this, you just, you don't ruin it by putting color in it. This is, your, the design work is the star of the show. It's either got to be color or design, but not both. So, yeah. These, these yarns are absolutely lovely. And I can't, I'm thinking this is from Sock Obsessions out of Utah. And I think this might be Teeny Button Studio out of New Orleans. But yeah, I did, and I did modify this a little bit. I, um, you know, I just made it, the sleeves three quarter length and did a bit of a blousing technique, you know, did some decreases and then you know, a pearled hemline there. And for, instead of having ribbing down at the bottom, I just kind of knit it in a tunic style and, and then just bound off and, you know, it rolls just a little bit. So yeah, that is my Sayuri sweater by Valentina Bogdanova. And speaking of that particular designer, I, I'm going to mention her again coming up in future knitting plans. So I'll insert some pictures of a couple, at least a couple more sweaters of her that I plan to knit. And I've taken some detours and um, have taken care of some other knitting and I, I in preparing for this episode, I'm reminded of those sweaters that I want to knit. You'll be blown away. <laughs> so when you see them, they are stunning. And now, let's see, moving on to works in progress. So this is another Valentina Bogdanova sweater that I started. This is a sweater that my daughter picked out. And I'll insert a picture of what the sweater looks like finished, but this is the NYX sweater. So I can't undo it all the way because I don't want to lose stitches, but you know, just another beautiful sweater. Now the, she begins, you know, as you can see here, it's a, a top down lace yoke as are, I think all of her sweaters. Um, so the, the neckline, there's no scalloping with that, but there is this lovely twisted rib. And let's see if I can at least spread out some of it here. So you see you have more sections of twisted rib and more. So I need to return to this. You know, I need to get this knit for my daughter. It's springtime, so it's a perfect time for to her to have her sweater. So I need to finish that. Got to finish that blanket first. I still have a, a lot of work to do. I was a little under the weather this week, so I, I didn't get a lot done. So that's why I'm not showing it this podcast. But when I make a lot of podcast progress on it, I'll pull it back out and show it to you. Y'all can help me be ac accountable. And yes, I said y'all. <laughs> So a couple of the other sweaters that I mentioned to you earlier that have been on my knitting wish list for about a year now, and I already have the yarn or ordered for them. Um, I just need to get some projects off my needles. But again, a couple more Valentina Bogdanova sweaters. And uh, feel free to look them up. I'm going to put some pictures up here so you can see for yourself. The first one is a bulky weight sweater, and it's called the Enamorado sweater. And it's uh, just these beautiful cables, and um, it's going to be really cozy warm. So I'm definitely going to get that on the needles. It'll probably be, might end up being summertime, but then I'm going to have a really nice, warm, cozy sweater for winter. And the other one is the Aria sweater and I'll, I'll put the names I'll show them on the screen and also again another picture here so you can see and the, it's a, also another cabled sweater and I believe she used a very similar cable pattern in both of these maybe that's why I'm drawn to them both but this one is a fingering weight and you know there's an interesting you know 
you know, neckline. And it is, this particular one is just the a cabled yoke. Whereas the enamorado, that the cables are all over the whole body. So go check out all her other sweaters and see if there's some that maybe you might enjoy needing. So another work in progress. This is an old one. And this is going to be a sock for myself. I'll insert a picture of it so you can see what this is going to look like. But a beautiful sock. I love vanilla socks and knitting with fun yarns where the color takes center stage. But I also really enjoy knitting patterned socks. So... This one, I don't have a great deal done on it, but these are going, this is the Reykjavik socks. I forgot who the, oh, Cookie A. How could I forget her? Um, she is a brilliant sock designer, and uh, I sure miss her contributions. I, I'm not sure what she's doing now. I hope she's good. But So these are going to be Reykjavik socks. And you can see it's full of twisted rib. I, I believe that... Her inspiration for these socks was a piece of architecture in Reykjavik. So you can see all this twisted rib and, and all. So these are going to be quite lovely. Uh, something I forgot to mention as well when I was showing my vanilla socks from last week. <clears throat> my preferred method for knitting socks is Magic Loop. Um, I'm using the Chalgu Red Lace and most of the time I'm using um, US ones 2.25 millimeters. And if the unless the pattern calls for something else, the German twisted cast on is what I go for every time. It is a wonderful stretchy cast on. So I can't remember what I did with these. These have been sitting for a little while, but I'm glad to be reminded about these because I'm definitely <clears throat> going to get these finished as well. And the yarn for this is Knit Picks Stroll Fingering. And it's their Stroll Glimmer. There's some Stellina in here. You probably can't see it in this lighting, but it is the Frost colorway. And I just, I think this is lovely. Something else that I forgot to mention is that when I get a 50 gram skein of yarn, if it is a, like a beautiful color of yarn and it's either self-striping or from an indie dyer, what I typically do is I will put a contrasting cuff heel and toe and that enables me to get a full pair of socks out of one 50 gram skein of indie dyed yarn so that's what I do and also another thing I do is if I need a solid color unless there is something um, highly specialized about that hank of yarn from the indie dyer I will usually buy yarn from a commercial yarn store like Knit Picks or Webs, and that helps my yarn budget go just a little bit further. Well, you know, it gives me a little more money for indie dyed yarn, and um, that's what I do. And another thing I, I noticed last year sometime is this, the company, there's another company owned by Knit Picks, Knit Picks called we crochet at wecrochet.com and I noticed that if you get to the $35 level at we crochet they give you free shipping at that point whereas at knit picks you have to spend $65 before you get free shipping so, so it's the same yarn so sometimes I will order from we crochet if I'm not ordering as much um, also, this bag that my Reykjavik socks are in, this is by Little Robin Cottage. And her bags are so sturdy. 
she's on Instagram so you can find her on Instagram but this is just so lovely she has these really sturdy snaps you know she might put inter um, few, what is it I, I'm messing it up I know what it is and I can't remember the word but it's definitely thick fabric and this is what the inside of her bag looks like in these sturdy snaps she's also on this side she's included a little d ring so if you want to hook some stitch markers or something that you don't want dangling in the bottom of the bag then um, you can do that so that's where my Reykjavik socks are and yeah and then oh and the, for my I forgot to mention with the, my daughter's NYX sweater the yarn that I'm using for that, uh, my daughter chose this. She wanted something peachy pink. So she selected this from Sweet Georgia. So I'm getting, I got the Tough Love Sock, and it's in the rose gold colorway. So this has, let's see, there's 425 yards. And this is a an 80-20 superwash merino and nylon. But aren't the colors just so pretty? Sweet Georgia has so many beautiful colors. And um, it just so happened this was the first time I had ordered her yarn. And I was, I was glad my daughter picked this colorway out because I was excited to work with Sweet Georgia. And then... From there, um, uh, I'll talk about my uh, signature needle arts, and um, my needles showed up yesterday. So I was so excited! I got my last set of DPNs from Signature Needle Arts. Whoops! I was about to turn this upside down. Let me make sure. Okay, this is this is the right way. So this is another needle pouch that I ordered to hold my DPNs in this lovely fabric. And I got it, you know, from Signature Needle Arts. And their needle cases are really nice and sturdy. Very nice and sturdy. So I'm tickled to have them. And now I have my full, well, I know they have more sizes, but this is, um, um, was part of a Christmas present. What I did with some Christmas money I got back in December. So now I have all my six inch DPNs with stiletto tips from Signature Needle Arts. So I'm glad to have that. So now I'd like to share with you a little bit from um, our family to yours. Um, just a couple pictures, uh, not a lot, but recently my daughter has learned how to go fishing. That was something she wanted to do and she's also taken up art. And I'm amazed at how quickly she's learning these things. Um, I'm finding my daughter is quite a creative soul as well. I have one little picture of my son that I'll tuck in there, but um, I'll also include some footage of the local deli that I mentioned in my first podcast. I mentioned the pottery that I was drinking from. So for those of you that might be interested in that beautiful little deli, um, stick around for a few minutes of some footage from the deli. And um, I, I don't go there often, but it's absolutely beautiful and definitely a, a nice place to take your knitting while you enjoy some organic chai tea or some other delicious drink um, and sandwiches so enjoy the footage <laughs>
Hi, Jilly. I was gonna get you. <laughs> hey, Levi. Mom, mom, mom. Yes. Restaurant. Hi, mom. Hi. Hi, Levi. Levi, what you looking at? So I had to pause for a few hours and I'm back now. So you could probably tell the lighting is a little bit different and um, later in the day, but with good reason, I've been waiting on a shipment and it was a bit of su a surprise for you all and for myself. Um, I have a friend that has opened a new yarn shop in Edmond, Oklahoma and so I just received a package from her and I've actually stopped ordering needles and uh, yarn for the most part. I've gotten nowhere. I just delete the emails and I just, I just don't look. <laughs> but with a friend opening a yarn shop, I've got to support my friend, right? So anyway, so I'm glad uh, finally the shipment literally just pulled in the driveway. So I, I want to show you what I got. And it, my friend Christy packaged it beautifully when I opened the box. She has it in this beautiful sack that says thank you. So this is a nice little tote that I'll be reusing in the future. So let's take a look at what I have here. So, and by the way, uh, it's uh, Christie's Fiber Arts in Edmond, Oklahoma. And if you live close enough, boy, are you ever lucky. She has a beautiful yarn shop. By the way, you might hear my son playing upstairs. I would, had recorded, was recording earlier during his nap time. So you may hear some, my son playing upstairs. So let me get this organized a little bit here oh this is so beautiful Christy so so I got a few hanks here by the way so this is her lovely logo it's Christy's fiber arts and uh, she's she's not just a new yarn shop owner she is a yarn dyer so it's good to know people so this one, this particular beautiful yellow is called Drop of Golden Sun. And this is in the sport weight. This is a 100% superwash merino wool. And then I got, this is Silver Moon, which is this lovely... I apologize. I had to pause there and <laughs> contain noise levels a little bit. Hopefully I can manage the last few minutes and a little bit of quiet. So anyway, this um this lovely gray is called Silver Moon. This is also this is on the same base. This is 100% superwash merino wool. And by the way, affordable prices. This is 23.50 for indie dyed yarn. And then this one, the next one is called Storm Shine, and it has these lovely yellows and grays mixed in. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's on the same base. So these are going to go into something together, most likely a shawl is what this is going to be. Just, I love these colors. Christy, you did a fabu fabulous job. Okay, and that's not all. Let's see here. Let 
And then we have there is Shades of Pecan. These two are going to go in a project together. Shades of Pecan and Pebbles on the Beach. And Shades of Pecan is this lovely taupey kind of color, a tonal, which is absolutely beautiful. It's on, this is a uh, fingering weight. This is 100% superwash merino as well. And you get 400 yards in a 100 gram hank. And this pebbles on the beach. It's mostly a neutral. And Christy was explaining to me that she added other neutral colors, like what you see in this um, Shades of Pecan Hank is also in here. But the colors kind of split off in, into, like you can see, like some little blues and yellows. You know, maybe even a little bit of orange in there. Lots of interesting things happening in this little Hank. It's quite look lovely. Look at it may be hard to see with my lighting at this time of day. That's gorgeous. So that is those two Hanks. And then let's see here. Then we have this is the Carol Jean, and I got the last one. I apologize, but <laughs> when I heard it was the last one, I was like that's mine. <laughs> Please put it on the truck and send it to me. So this particular base, this is her sport weight again, 100% uh, mer superwash merino wool. And there's there's these teals and oranges, um, you know, some subtle greens in this hank. It's really pretty. And then this this is the blue that is in this hank and the colorway name is peace okay mom life i had to take a pause again um you mothers know exactly um what um what it's like so anyway soldiering on now so i what i was starting to say is that i want to Thank you all for, for the amazing, warm welcome. And what I want to do is to do something special for when I hit a 1,000 subscribers. So I was talking with my friend Christy about this and asking could she provide something. And she's amazing. She has. So I, I, I need to look into the legalities of how to do this and I, it, I want to do there will be two different ones because of shipping costs I'm hearing are pretty enormous you know to ship overseas so I want to do something for my overseas viewers and that will be in the form of a pattern of your choice on Ravelry not over $10, and it has to be just one pattern, like not a booklet of patterns. Um, and the, But for my viewers that are in the U.S. or Canada, um, this is what my friend Christy and I have cooked up. So she has so generously offered up one of her beautiful hanks of yarn. And this is an, a lovely lavender. What she calls this vinca and i i know of uh, there's some flowers that are called vinca and they have this they're in this beautiful purple so this is a quite lovely purple tonal this is a 75 25 superwash merino nylon blend there's 462 yards in this so so there's this lovely hank of yarn but that is not all she has also donated a 24 inch US 4 Chow Goo needle, and there's more. She also sent some beautiful stitch markers, and this is by a local maker from her area, and it's called uh, the Knitter's Companion. So these 
uh, will fit, it says, up to a U.S. size 10 or 6 millimeter. And they're so lovely. She There are a number of stitch markers in her shop. So there's many more than just this. But look how beautiful. Oh, I'm going to have to get my own. This is so lovely. This little, if it'll turn around and, whoops, if I can get it to, this little pink flower. Isn't that just lovely? Oh, and it's lightweight, so it won't be heavy. But, oh my goodness, and on this little ring. I, I'm, I'm getting myself some of these. These are lovely. And it's in this nice, neat little case. So, I have to figure out how to do it legally. But, um, so, be looking forward to a surprise that I have planned for the future between Christy and I. Um, and... You know, feel free to go to her shop, you know, and look at look her up online. She's on Instagram if you want to go ahead and be taking a peek at things. So, with that, that's an exciting second episode. And I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed filming and sharing more things with you. And I look forward to continuing the conversation in the in the comments well that's a wrap of episode two i hope you enjoyed everything and um so just just remember knitting is supposed to be about fun and it's not a competition if you enjoy garter stitch and stockinette um that's what it's all about is just having a good time with it and with that i'm gonna sign off and enjoy the outro i have a gallery at the end of a few of my makes and some of them i still have around others are with lovely friends that i knit them for and uh, so my mug of choice today this is a sweet little mug that my daughter gave me for my birthday just a few years ago and i it, it's well loved it gets used quite a bit so anyway with that said um and pick up a nice, delicious, warm mug of something in your knitting. And remember, we are knitters. If we're sitting, we're knitting. <laughs> Until next time, bye.